Welcome back to Coast View. Listen, I really enjoyed that conversation with Jeff Duncan. I say it almost every week, but we're really lucky to have him. And uh, he and Kyle and I have some terrific conversations during breaks. And, um, you know, Jeff, man, it's been almost three years of visiting with us every single Friday. We're so lucky to have him. He's been the top columnist in Louisiana year after year. He's written a number of books about the Saints. The most recent book was about uh, the Sean Payton, Drew Brees era. Extremely uh, well-written book. It's, it's a book not just about football, but about management and leadership, et cetera. Sold extremely well. And now he's writing Steve Gleason's book. And you can tell from our weekly conversations that what he's learning in this journey that he's taken with Steve Gleason and his wife is um, is a lesson in life. It's a lesson in, you know, you, you think you've got a tough situation. How do, how do you how do you take a tough situation and make it into a positive? How do you still live life and enjoy life even when you're in the situation that Steve Gleason's in? And uh, it's interesting not only hearing Jeff talk about the book and 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 Steve's view toward life as a result of of, uh, of his long battle with ALS, but it's also what Jeff's learning, what Jeff's learning about life and um, his, you know, he's, you know, he's more philosophical, you know, and he, I'm not surprised to be honest with you, because he's an incredible journalist, a great writer. He's been through so much as a writer beyond just football and, and sports, obviously the aftermath of Katrina and being part of that team. I, I was had a pleasure working with him when we were in, in New Orleans working together at NOLA.com and the Times Picayune. So lucky to have him, and we, we get the added benefit of just learning some lessons in life from Jeff. So it's just just cool to have that those conversations. Now let's shift gears and move over to Sanja Gillis. She's actually the director of marketing and public relations at the Lynn Meadows Discovery Center and uh, before we we'll go, for, we've got a lot we're going to talk about. Before we go any further, let me just say good morning to you, Sanja. How you doing? Good morning. How are you? And thank you for inviting me. It's, yeah, you, you bet. It's great to have you. Listen, I've been, I've been uh, when I was publisher of the Sun Herald, and then also the chairman of the local Knight Foundation effort. We we did everything in our power to help Loon Meadows Discovery Center every step of the way, from just a dream to where it is today, this incredibly important children's museum in Mississippi. And we'll remind people about that. And I mentioned to you before we started that that Dreams, this incredible uh, gala that you guys do every year, what an inspiring uh, performance that is. And we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Um, so why don't we, uh, let's just start with, if you're telling, if some people who are listening to this show haven't thought about the Lynn Meadows Discovery Center before. Maybe they're new to the air and they don't even know about it. How do you talk about it with people who you want to understand what it's all about? So um, we we are a children's museum located in Gulfport. Um, and a lot of people don't know what children's museums are, but they're um, hands-on. We believe in hands-on interactive play. And um, we have... Uh, 15,000 square feet of indoor exhibits for children to let their imaginations run wild. But then we also have seven and a half acres of outdoor space um, where kids can run and play and, um, you know, just ha have a good time. They're, they're learning and they're not really knowing that they're <laughs> learning while, while they're playing. Yeah, it's a, it's a real popular it's a real popular place. I, again, as I have, you know, over many, many years, I had the opportunity to go there and, and watch it evolve into what it's become. Again, one of the top few, uh, uh, children museum in this region. And then I've watched through my grandkids as they go there on a regular basis. It's not the kind of place where you just go once, you know, they, it's where, where they want to come back to time and time again, because as they grow older, they start to realize certain other aspects of the museum. So it's, it's not a one and done kind of thing. It's a so it's sort of a, a, a relationship that families have with the museum over many years, isn't it? Yes. We're, we're starting to see um, kids that came and played 25 years ago are coming back with their children. And so they're saying, you know, I played here as a child. And um, we're seeing that second generation come through. So looking back on the pandemic, how, how did you guys weather the pandemic and what's the state of affairs today? So today, um, in 2022, we did the numbers. We are we had like 97,000 visitors. So we're back where we were in 2019. 
Um, 2020, we had to close, of course, for three months. And then um, when we reopened, you know, it, it was slow, but um, we, we finally built that back up. You know, I, I think we gained the trust of everyone, um, you know, with cleaning and we, and we still, even today, we're still doing the same cleaning policies and everything that we started um, with COVID. It's just important to make sure that people know that their children are be safe, you know, when they come here. And um, so, yeah. but yeah. yeah, the COVID that year was, you know, <laughs> yeah. kind of crazy. <laughs> well, it was tough for everybody, but it is awesome to hear that you're back to your pre-Katrina level. Um, that's, that's awesome. That's really, I, I know that some, I've, I have the opportunity to talk to so many different attractions here along coast of Mississippi and some, some are exceeding pre pre uh, pandemic numbers. Some are just getting back. Some are still not quite where they were before. I guess it just depends on what what you know what sector you're dealing with. But you would think you know with young children especially that the that the discovery center is in a really good position to not only get back to where you are now, which is to pre pandemic levels, but to really kind of take off from here. At least that's your hope, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I mentioned that the the Dreams Gala and the Dreams performance every year was something I really look forward to at the Sun Herald because it really highlighted some incredible young talent here in coastal Mississippi. And it was really inspiring. And uh, 25th anniversary gala now. I mean, it's amazing to me to look back that that much time has flown by. G give me some of the, some of the details. So um, we... Uh, the Beau Rivage is, is a great community partner of ours, and um, they have offered to let our kids come and perform um, on the stage in the theater of the Beau Rivage. And um, to, we, it's the museum's been open 25 years. We haven't done 25 years at the Beau Rivage, but 2019 was our last year, and then you know COVID and everything. And they they called us and asked us if we wanted to come do it again. And um, you know we're we're very excited. Um, our wings director um, Cliff Thompson and his associate director Maury Schimper, um have been putting together this show. Um, they. They have some special guests. David Delk is one of them. And um, we have the Next Level Performing Arts Group and um, Hope Academy um, as our guests. And I believe they have some other guests um, coming on. And then, of course, our kids. And they've put together numbers from the past programs, and then the, they've got some new numbers coming. So um, it's, good to see da it's good to see David involved. David's been on the show many times. I've, yeah, he's a he's a friend. He's been I've known him for so, so many years. But it, but in the performing area of coastal Mississippi, he has uh, he he's a mainstay. He I often say that there are certain people who have stood the test of time, and David Delk is one of them. Yes. In fact, I, I have to tell you a funny story. Uh, we we did a show, we did a show. It was around Christmas a couple of years ago, and uh, he was sitting near a piano. And uh, so we had this long visit, really terrific visit. And I said, you know, is that a piano behind you? He said, yeah. I said, hey, go sit over there. So he goes and sits over there and he sings a Christmas tune. I can't remember which one it was. Cal, do you remember which one it was? I, I can't remember. Yeah. So anyway, did. We pulled it out. We pulled it out and did us kind of, we didn't have clips then or reels then, but we just did a separate video that we posted and it got viewed like 20,000 times. <laughs> it was super, super popular, but it's good to have him involved. But hey, for people who have not heard of the Wings Performing Arts Group, tell, tell that's really been a, a mainstay for the, the, for Lynn Meadows Discovery Center. Tell us about that. Yes, it, it, it's, um, Really, it's our performing arts program, um, and it, it has been in existence for um, over 20 years. Tanya Hayes was the founder, and um, it's for children ages 6 to 18, and they, um, they nurture the kids with their talent, and they, they learn everything about perform the performing arts world, from acting to behind the scenes, um, uh, all kinds of things. And they uh, do eight productions a year. Um, we're working on Mean Girls, which is coming up um, at the end of the month. 
and we're, we're excited about that. That's going to be, I believe, the middle, uh, middle school age children. So um, they, the kids just have van fantastic talent. And we've seen kids that join the program that have never acted before in their life or sang. And then you, you see what, you know, happens to them after they, you know, start going through the program. I mean, some of them go on to act in college and, you know, they just, they just do a really good job. They do. Yeah. I was, uh, I was in, in music. Well, I've been in music all my life. I'm a drummer and bang on the piano. And my mother was a, was a, a piano teacher for early part of my life. And um, man, I just know the importance of, of growing that part of your brain. And I know that this particular performing arts group has just seen incredible successes over, over many years. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Sanja Gillis, who is with the Lynn Meadows Discovery Center. We'll see you after this. Welcome back to Coast View. You know, look, look. if you think about the Lynn Meadows, Meadows Discovery Center and you think about the performing arts programs that they have, that's been in existence for many years. I remember when Tanya <clears throat> Tanya first started it, and we started this these, these dream productions along the way. That the incredible talent that the performing arts group was was uncovering. And when, when I went to my first performance at the Beau Rivage, I never will forget. I really didn't know what to expect, and pretty quickly it hit me that. Wow. <laughs> First of all, the production itself is extremely impressive. But but the talent of the young people that are identified that that emerge as part of this performing arts, you know, some sing and some play instruments, some, you know, what as you pointed out, they dance and they do there are so many different aspects to it. But we're talking about a production, high production quality that is not just something that you're inspired by because it's kids, but you're inspired by because it's really good. <laughs> Uh, and that's something that people say on a regular basis, isn't it? Yes. Yes. It's, um, I remember when I first started here and, um, I had to work the event and go to it. I just, I couldn't stop telling people afterwards, you really need to go see dreams. I mean, it just blows you away. And like you said, that it's not just the kids singing, it's the, the numbers and the, the way the production is, it, it's just, you know, yeah, and big shout out to the Beau Rivage yes. for being a sponsor for over so many years and for, for wanting you to come back. What a great partnership that's been. Again, many, many, many years that's been in place. But anyways, Thursday, April the 20th at 7.30. Give me some details. So um, the tickets are $25 um, for adults and then 15 for seniors, students, and um museum members and um, you can buy the tickets online on our website lmdc.org or um, we will be at the Beau Rivage Theater that evening selling tickets um, as well and um, doors open at 7 30. Well that's cool that's uh, April the 20th April the 20th listen we had a chance to visit a little bit before the show started but tell me more about what you do there. So um, I'm the director of marketing and PR, and um, I also handle our memberships. Uh, we wear many hats here at, <laughs> at the museum, but um, pretty much handle just promoting the um, everyday events that are going on here at the museum, and um, as well as you know our social media, our website, um, all of our print. Um, and so, uh, you know, just kind of stay busy with that. And then, you know, help with events um that we're putting together um and you've always is, you've always got something going on i mean if you if you think like go, like heading toward the summer big time summer programs you've got boogie nights which is an important part of what you guys do give me the details on both of those so um boogie night is our adult fundraiser we do one a year and um it has been that theme for 25 years and um it, it was when I started here. It was like in the '70s, boogie night, and then we've just kind of uh, changed it. We went up to the '80s um, for a while, and then um, this year, since we're celebrating our 25th anniversary, we decided uh, we're going to party like it's 1998, and we're going to go up to the '90s. And um, so we have several people that work here that are '90s children, and they're very excited <laughs> about doing that. But um, you know. Uh, being a nonprofit, things like fundraisers are really important. So, um, 
you know, we, we like to do something to raise money and, you know, also add a little fun in there <laughs> for the for people sure. that did. For sure. I mean, and that's going to be uh, August 26th this year. Which is so if you're interested in sponsoring or want to attend the event, I always watch uh, with a lot of interest the, the social media posts that come out of that. People are creative about the way they dress, and you can tell it's always extraordinarily well attended, and people enjoy being there. And you know, there's there, you know from from the posting, you can tell it's it's, it's just a lot of fun. And then the I, obviously there's a lot that goes on as it relates to summer camps during during the year. And I would really encourage people to go take a look at the website, which, as she pointed out a minute ago, is LM Lynn Meadows, lmdcdiscoverycenter.org, lmdc.org. And you can get more information about how to register and anything like that. Anything else you want to say about that before we move on? Um, so our, our summer camps will start uh, the week of May 30th, and we will run eight weeks. And so every week we have different themed camps, um, ages four to 11. So, um, and you can do a half day or a full day option. So it's, it's very popular. Um, we've already started taking uh, registrations. We're not sold out of anything yet. So we have lots of spots left, but um, we would love, you know, to, for people to register their children and come here. Hey, one other event that I, I, I passed by and I want to make sure we focus on Friday, April the 14th is mother son, Western theme dance. Tell me about that. So, um, Last year, we rolled out the daddy-daughter Valentine's dance, and um, it was really, really popular. So we had moms that were saying, wait a minute, we need to have a mother-son event. So we came out with the mother-son Western event, which was um, not as popular as the daddy-daughter, but um, we had a lot of um, response. So this is our second annual one, and it's this Friday um, from 6 to 7.30, and we um, we are going to have a DJ. Everything's going to be decorated Western, and um, we still have spots available. Well, good, good. Again, you call Lynn Meadows Discovery Center if you're interested in that. Hey, we're out of time for today, but we'll uh, we'll get you back in a month or two, and we'll uh, just stay in touch with what's happening there because I know it's always something good going on. So thank you for visiting with me today. Thank you. You bet. Uh, have a great weekend, and uh, we will see you Monday morning. Have, have a good one.